There's a new and improved masking tool in Premiere Pro that allows you to mask things out automatically. This is a vast improvement, so let me show you how you can use it. Right now, you can only find this tool in the beta version of Premiere, so go to your Creative Cloud app, click on Apps, then select Beta and find Premiere Pro Beta. This feature will be included in the main version of Premiere in the upcoming months, but this is how you can access it and test it out for now. It will prompt you to enable this feature when you first launch the beta version, so just accept it. To use the masking feature, select the object masking tool and if you hover over your footage, it should highlight an object you're trying to mask. Once you click on it, you should see this outline. To track your selection, just click this button and it will mask out your entire clip. Once it's done, you'll see all of these keyframes, but what was really confusing for me is that by default, the mask does nothing. As you can see, it's under the unassigned masks tab. So if you want to remove the background, just take the mask and drag it under the opacity tab. And if you duplicate the clip, you can easily put text or graphics in between these two clips to achieve this effect, which would previously require you to use After Effects. Also, if you add an effect to your clip, this mask will automatically be applied to that specific effect. So if I add a black and white effect, the background will automatically become black and white, but keep my subject untouched. The quality of the mask is okay. It's not amazing, you can see a lot of jagged edges, but you can tweak it a bit with these parameters. For more precise work, I would still use After Effects, but this is so much easier and gives you like 90% of the results really quickly. I was also really impressed with how smart the masking is. In this shot, my hands are constantly moving in and out of frame, but it had no issue with it and masked it out perfectly even though they're separate from the rest of my body here. The speed is also quite good. I have a pretty good computer and I got 9 FPS on a 4K timeline and around 30 FPS on a 1080p clip, which is basically faster than real time. Anyway, try this feature out yourself and I'll see you in the next video.